Hello. I know y'all wondering why there isn't a video going on and just a picture. Well, it's the coronavirus time and we're not meeting here in the house because of, of it. So I'll be doing just audio part of part four on Stevens. Now we're going to be in Act 7 and we're going to go start with verses 20 through 44. In the last week, we learned that they got a new king in Egypt, a new pharaoh. And he doesn't know anything about Joseph. And he starts to um, kill the male babies because the Jews seem to have been grown too fast. So to keep them under control, they put them under slavery. And Stevens is showing the uh, religious leaders here that he is for Moses. He praised Moses and how God used him in his ministry because they said he spoke about Moses, but he's lifted Moses up at this point. He tells them about how Moses survived from all the male inf infants being born. He tells them of Pharaoh's daughter, how she raised him and taught him the wisdom of the Egyptians and how he became powerful in speech and actions. He tells them how, why Moses had to leave Egypt for killing an Egyptian. But there's another reason Moses left, and that's in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24 and through 27. And it was by faith that Moses, when he grew up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to share the oppression of God's people instead of enjoying the fleeing pleasures of sin. And through it was, and excuse me, he thought it was better to suffer for the sake of Christ than to own the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking ahead to his great reward. In verse 27, it was by faith that Moses left the land of Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He kept right on going because he kept his eyes on the one who is invisible, which is the Lord. That's, that's the reason he left Egypt. And in verse 37, it says, This is that Moses which saith unto the children of Israel, a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto of your brothers, liken unto me, him shall you hear. This was said in the Old Testament. In Deuteronomy chapter 18, Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your fellow Israelites. You must listen to him. Now, of course, we know he's speaking about Jesus. The prophet, not a prophet, but the prophet. And just like Moses showed all these miracles, all the plagues in Egypt, the Red Sea, the water that came out of the rock, and other miracles the Lord used Moses to do. He said this prophet will do the same thing in signs and miracles. And we know that's what Jesus did. He did several, many signs and miracles. Now, we need to remember that we're accusing Stephen of speaking against Moses, like I said. He just shown them, no, he is not against Moses. But they didn't like Moses either. He shows that Moses is one that the Lord pick to rule and speak to. Stephen was showing them that just like their fathers rejected Moses, they did the same thing in rejecting Jesus, the Messiah. It says that the people wanted to go back to Egypt. And they would have gone back to Egypt. But the Lord closed the Red Sea after he had opened it. You know, a lot of times that's, that's what we feel like as Christians. The trials and tribulations start coming and we, we feel like going back to our old ways. Because as being Christians, we do suffer trials and tribulations because we're hated of the world were talked about and we don't want to be people don't want to be around us and we don't like being rejected 
And there's times we do feel like going back to Egypt. But we don't. Because we know, without a doubt, it's much better living for the Lord than to, than to be living the way we used to. Living the way I used to almost killed me. In verse 40, Stephen goes on to tell them how the people started to worship other gods. He shows how the Jews turned on Moses. He tells them how the Lord is going to send them further back than where they were before as slaves. In verse 44 through 47, Stephen is going to address them about what they accused them of in chapter 6, verse 13, speaking words against the temple. He says, After God gave David victory over all his enemies, he asked that he might find a dwelling place to build a temple for the Lord. Of course, we know that the Lord rejected David from building the temple. He denied him, and he gave it to Solomon to build a temple for the Lord. Now, let me show you in the King James Bible, verse 45, it uses the word Jesus, which means Joshua, which that's what his name means in Greek. And the only reason I point that out is because if you're reading out of the translated Bible, in some it's, it does say Joshua, but in the King James it says Jesus, but it does not mean Jesus, it means Joshua in that verse. Now in verse 48, Stevens was trying to show them that the Lord of the Most High doesn't live in temples made by men. This is what Solomon said in 1 Kings 8.27. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee, how much less this house that I have built. So Solomon is saying, uh, we, you can't hold God to a temple, to a building. He's everywhere all the time. These buildings we have now, they're just a building. It's not the house of God. It's not the temple of God. When we became born-again Christians, we became the temple of God. It says it in the Word. We are his, his, we are his temple now. And Stephens was trying to show them that Solomon did build a temple, but the real temple was Jesus Christ, which was not made by hands. Which Mark 14, 58 says, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and within three days I will build another made without hands. So Stephen was showing them that they were the ones blaspheming the real temple and killed Jesus. Stephen's is really letting them have it. This is a man of God, fearing no other man, no matter what kind of rank he has in religion or whatever. He's speaking for his Lord God. Now in verse 52, he tells how their parents were disobedient, and, say, and so are they. They refused to receive the Lord Jesus, and even now, you are betrayers and murderers of the Lord. He said now, not just their forefathers who prosecuted the prophets and, and, and disobeyed, but even now. They were doing the same thing. There's more than one way to kill Jesus. It's not only physically. In Matthew 7, 15, Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raven wolves. This is so true. So back then they have it, and we still have it today. Men that are dressed in sheep in sheep's clothing but they're wolves they're wolves inside and they're after one one or two things one is money second is popularity men love to be popular they love to have big churches big followings they that <clears throat> this is something they enjoy to have people follow them 
And the Bible says, the words of God says that uh, the scriptures weren't made for private interpretation. But that's what wolves do. They interpret what the words of God say to, to fit them, to help them to get more glory and more money. In Romans 16, verse 17 and 18, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. And avoid these people. Avoid the ones who are saying, just like the devil, when he said, oh, to Eve, oh, you surely won't die. Well, that's what God told her, and that's what she said. And he's saying, oh, no, that's not going to happen. And we got preachers today who, who do the same thing. In verse 18, For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. Their own belly. They want to feed themselves. And by good works and fair speeches desire, deceive the hearts of the simple. And the simple, they're the ones who don't study the words of God. They're the ones, you can tell them anything and they believe it because they don't know. They don't study. We need to study the words of God. So we won't be deceived by these wolves. In 1 John chapter 4, verses 1-3, through 3, Beloved, believe not every spirit. But try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Amen? And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not God, is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. Now I have a teaching. It's on cults. And I do mention names. The wolves out there. The preachers that are, in, that are, that are acting as men of God, but they're wolves. They have sheep clothing on. And, and I don't have no problem mentioning them because Jesus did the same thing to the religious leaders here. He called them snakes, vipers, hypocrites, and he pointed them out to the people. So just like my teacher, my Lord, he taught me how to do it. So what kind of teacher would I be if I don't point out these wolves to you? Now in verse 53 and 54, he tells them that they are they have disobeyed the Lord on purpose. Even when the angel of God spoke to them. That's what he tells them. Even when the angel of God spoke to them. Stephen's preaching was bringing a lot of tension to them. And it was becoming very uneasy for them to listen to him. He also showed them how knowledgeable he was on the scriptures. They were supposed to be the ones who were supposed to be, and they are knowledgeable of the scriptures, but they don't take the scriptures to heart. They have them up in their head. Having the scriptures up in your head does not save you. Having the scriptures, the word of God in your heart, that's what saves us. Stephen is saying the same thing that Jesus said. In Luke chapter 11, verse 46 through 50, and I'm going to read this out of the Living Bible. What sorrow awaits you? For you build monuments for the, for the prophets your own ancestors killed long ago. So he's telling them again. Your ancestors killed the prophets. In verse 48, But in fact, you stand as witness who agree with what your ancestors did. They agree with what they did. I mean, he's plainly telling them here. They killed the prophets and you join in their crime by building the mon monuments. Verse 49, This is what God in his wisdom said about you. I will send prophets and apostles to them, but they will kill some and persecute the others. And this is exactly what was happening at this time. In verse 50, as a result, this generation will be held responsible for the murder of all God's prophets from the creation of the world. They've been doing it since the creation of the world. 
religious leaders. I hope you're listening to me. I'm talking about men who so are supposed to be men of God. But they're wolves. It's so, so important that we learn that we be hungry and thirsty for the word of God. Like it says in Matthew chapter 5, we need to be hungry. And this is the reason. This is the reason we need to be hungry. Stephen was totally in the spirit. And he was able to see heaven and the glory of God. Amen. It says here that Jesus was standing on the right hand of God. This is what I believe. This is what I believe. Jesus was standing to receive Stephen with open arms. Being well pleased for standing up against these wolves. This is what I believe. It doesn't actually say that here in the scriptures. But this is what I believe is going on. These religious leaders covered up their ears and started to shout. They didn't want to hear what Stephen was saying. And then they ran after him and took him out into the city to be stoned. Same thing they did to Jesus, but they didn't stone Jesus. They crucified him on the cross. They didn't wait for a sentence to be pronounced to Stephen's. They already knew. They already knew that they wanted to kill him, that they wanted him dead. And it says in verse 58, And cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witness laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. Now this was their custom, to lay down their outer clothes and lay them down next to a young man, which at this point, this man was called Saul. And they laid their clothes down so he could take care of them, the clothes. Which later on, we're going to see that this Saul, the Lord changed his name to Paul. Acts 22, 20. And I was in complete agreement when your witness Stephen was killed. Paul Saul was saying he was in complete agreement with it. He said, I stood by and kept the coats that they took off when they stoned him. This is when he was Saul. But when he became Paul, instead of killing Christians, he started witnessing to the loss about Jesus Christ. Amen. Verse 59, And they stoned, stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. What does Stephen call God? What does Stephen call God here? Lord Jesus. There's so many places in the Bible, and I have a teaching on it, is Jesus God. But it's verses like this that I use. Stephen's called on God, and he says, Lord Jesus. And he says, receive my spirit. This is what Jesus said at the cross as a man in Luke 23, 46. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, and to thy hands I commit my spirit. And that's just what Stephen said. Receive my spirit. And Jesus said, I commend my spirit. And heaven saith thus, he gave up the ghost. Stephen's and Jesus are in the same boat here. The only thing difference between the two is Jesus, of course, was son of God. And he didn't say much at his hearing. But here we have a man who is just like Jesus. And he says a lot to the religious leaders. He didn't just sit down and do nothing and let them do whatever they wanted to do. In verse 60, and he kneeled, Stephen's, and he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Again, again, Stephen says the same thing Jesus said in Luke 23, 34. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Like I said, Stephen's and Jesus were so much alike. Stephen being a Christian, and what is a Christian? A Christian is being Christ-like. And who is Christ? Jesus. So Stephen was, was walking and talking in the way 
that Christians should by knowing the words of God. Stevenson was doing his ministry as a Christian knowing he was going to die. He knew he was, he was by defending his Lord Jesus Christ, which they killed. He saw what they did to Jesus, and he used the power of the Holy Spirit to do it. He saw, again, he saw what they did to Jesus, but yet he attacked them about Jesus, about Moses. He showed them that he was a man of God and he stood up for his Lord. And he used the power of the Holy Spirit, like I said at the very beginning of the teaching. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. And that's the way we do things. But we have to get the words of God in us so he can bring us, bring them back to our remembrance. So when we do use them, we don't even have to worry about being put to death for witnessing about the Lord. And we still don't do it. I've said it several times before. Christians are scared. Well, let me say it another. Christians listen to the devil when the devil tells them, oh, you can't, you can't win this. You can't talk about the Lord. And he gives them all kind of excuses why they can't. They're too shy. Uh, they don't know the scriptures, which probably that is true. But these are all uh, lies from the devil. He does not want people to know about Jesus Christ, our Lord. He does not want people getting saved. Now, for those of you who say you're a Christian, do you have the faith and the feeling of the Holy Spirit like Stephen? Do you? This is a question for you. You knew when you gave your life to the Lord, you would have to uh, a different way of living. And that's why it calls, that's why it's being called born again, because you learn a whole new way of speaking, living. I mean, it's a whole new life. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. If you say you're born again and, you're, and your friends or your family or both, they don't see no difference in you, then you didn't do it. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Old things have passed. You don't live the way you used to. Behold, all things become new. Like I said, if you, if you haven't changed and you're still doing the same things you did before, you got to question yourself. Am I a Christian? Did I give my, my heart to the Lord or, or did I just give my knowledge to him? Maybe we've seen what, is, what it is to be a real Christian doing the will of our Father. You might want to repent and pray that this is what you want. This is what you, you want to become this new creature. You want old things to be passed away. This is what you want. When we bec become Christians, we lose, the Bible says we lose our life to gain it. And this is exactly what happens. We die to self. To self. And we put the Lord Jesus Christ on the throne that we were sitting on. Okay? If you really don't want to go that far with the Lord, well, you should just walk away and be like these religious leaders and ignore the words of God. Hearing the words of God, if you cannot do them, it's either because you don't want to and you really haven't given your life to the Lord or you don't know how to use the power of the Holy Spirit like Stephen's did. Let me say this. If you really want to live for the Lord and do His will from your heart, but you're having a hard time doing it, pray about it. And the Lord will show you that you have the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome whatever it is you're having a hard time, whatever sin it is you're having a hard time with. Stevens has shown us how to be a Christian. We are 
We are hated by the world. And these religious leaders, they were from the world. They are of the world because they were not born again. The Lord says, Jesus said they didn't know the scriptures. Yes, they knew the scriptures, but they didn't know the scriptures from their heart. We can be like Stephen's. Well, we're supposed to be like Jesus Christ. But I said Stephen's because he's so much like Jesus. In Hebrews 13, 21, the Lord says, May he equip you with all you need for doing his will. The Lord will equip us, equip us with everything we need to do his will. And it says, May he produce in you, through the power of Jesus Christ, every good thing that is pleasing to him. All glory to him forever and ever. Amen. So the Lord has given us, he has given us the Holy Spirit. Now we as Christians, many of us don't know how to use it, and some of us don't want to use it. This teaching is so we can grow. So we can grow and use the power of the Holy Spirit that is in us. So we can, we can, Stand up to others who are against our Lord, our Savior, who is against our God, and come to them with the scriptures. We don't come to them with what we think. We come to them with the scriptures. If we come to, to them with what we think, well, they're going to attack us and they'll probably win because our thinking ain't worth a flip. But if we come to them with the scriptures like Stevens did, there's no way, there's no way they're going to defeat us. So I hope this teaching has helped us to grow, has helped us to show us that we have the same power, the same feeling of the Holy Spirit that Stephen's had here. And when they were stoning him to death, to death, I believe, because he was glorifying the Lord while they were stoning him. Now, how can a man be glorifying the Lord when he's, <sighs> while they're throwing stones at, not rocks, we're talking about stones at him. I believe Stephen was already with the Lord in the spirit when they were stoning him. That's what I believe. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this teaching. Thank you for showing us that a man called Stevens, but was a man just like us, how we can, through knowing the scriptures, through being hungry for the words of God, by having Bible study so we can learn, we can witness to the lost, those who want to hear, and those who attack you, we can show through the scriptures, no, that's not how it is. So thank you, Lord. Thank you for your words. Thank you. Thank you for all the many, many blessings you've given us. Thank you for the privilege you have given us here in this country that we don't have to hide to study your words, Father. And we also can worship you without hiding so thank you father you are so good to us so good to us lord and we need to realize that so when we do praise and worship you it will come deeper from our heart in jesus name amen